Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to delve once again into the topic, or a topic, that I am uncomfortable with. Last week's Thursday Thought, I talked about demonic possession. And when I was done, I felt very impressed by the spirit that I wasn't done talking on this subject. And I had been praying on it, but all week I've had the scriptures I'm going to discuss with you on my mind with the spirit of the lord telling me that i need to discuss this with you and i i'm going to be quite frank and say i don't know why this isn't a topic that we normally get into a lot in the latter-day saint movement so i don't know if the lord is asking me to do this because we need to if there's a problem that someone needs to see this to help resolve i don't know I feel very impressed by the Spirit to discuss this, and so even though I'm not fully comfortable with it, I am going to be getting into the topic again today. In 4th Moses, in the Plates of Brass, in chapter 7, starting in verse 17, it says, A man also, or a woman, that hath a familiar spirit, or is a necromancer, shall surely be cast out from among you, lest their blood be upon you. Neither shall thou be ruled over by omens, nor whisper enchantments in priestcraft. Turn not to the diviner, but let the dead have their rest. Neither seek after your dead to be defiled by them. Neither sleep upon the grave, that thou should be possessed by the dead. Know not their secrets, but let them have their due. Thou shalt not make any cuttings or incisions in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you for the dead. I am Yavah, which sanctify you. Now, I want to go over this a little bit at a time, and I'm hoping that this video doesn't run too long, but we'll see. I do these from off the cuff, and I try to cut them down as I can. So when it talks about a man or woman that has a familiar spirit, what is a familiar spirit? Well, if you look at 17a in the footnotes, it says that means a spirit of the dead. What is a necromancer? A necromancer is one who attempts to contact or control the dead. It is a type of priestcraft. When it talks about not being ruled over by omens, what's an omen? According to the notes here, it is basically a form of astrology where the stars are controlling your life. Nor whisper enchantments in priestcraft. What are enchantments in priestcraft? Enchantments are divination prophesying against someone or cursing them or trying to control them using magic, if you will. What is priestcraft? It is sorcery, the necromancer. These all tie in to the idea of trying to control the world as though we are the creator and they all have a very negative influence. I'm not in control of myself. Something else is in control of me. Someone else is in, in control of themselves. I'm going to take control of them. And all the rest of this is based around this idea of letting the dead rest. How does that all fit together? The thing that I really love about this particular group of scriptures, these, these verses, is let the dead have their rest. And I think that there are two keys to discuss here in these verses. One is that we need to let the dead have the rest. They've, they've lived their life. Leave them alone. But then the other part is don't obsess over them in mourning. Because if we are truly Christians, if we truly believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ and the resurrection then we know they're not really dead. They're not really gone. They will be restored and we will see them again. But there's a couple key things in here that I feel are important to discuss in light of the topic of possession and necromancy. And the first is, there's a, a, a board game um, called a Ouija board and it's I don't know they've, they've made um, movies about it it's it's considered to be some sort of like really 
occult device, I guess. But I have to tell you that I've never seen them ever actually really work. Uh, I don't really mess around with them. I've been in someone's house when they've had one or used one and they just didn't work. It just sat there and didn't do anything. But I've always felt very impressed by the Holy Spirit that that is not something that we should be messing with. Because number one, going back to these verses, if we're trying to contact people who are no longer alive, then we're not letting the dead rest. On the flip side, we don't know who we're actually talking to. And so this idea of it being a spirit of the dead may be correct. Maybe it's a good person that's passed on. Maybe it's, it's a not so good person that's passed on. But we don't really know who it is that passed on that we're talking to. And maybe it's someone who's never been alive because of their perdition. Maybe it's a demonic force. I don't believe that we need Ouija boards or things like it to talk to angels. Now, that said, I also do know that the Lord has given us things in righteousness to use, like the Lehites using the Liahona. That's a approved instrument, if you will, given to us by the Lord. And it's not used to talk to the dead. It's used to understand the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I don't believe it's used to talk to angels. That's not my understanding. I could be wrong. I'm not an expert in the Liahona. But it's something that's, that uses the Holy Spirit, and it's it's okay by God, and so therefore, it's it's fine. The same thing with an Urim and Thummim. That's a tool that we use to access the spirit world, to translate documents, and to gain spiritual witnesses and insight, spiritual and practical truths. But they don't require contact from the dead. There's no necromancy there. Anything you see in the Bible, Joseph of Egypt using the cup of water to see, it's really just an idea of having a place of focus and not trying to reach out and contact a potentially dangerous entity or even an innocently dangerous entity. We have to be safe. And so here's the thing. I remember one time I saw a sign that said not to pray on the Book of Mormon. It said, don't pray on the Book of Mormon. That's how Satan gets you. Something to that effect. And I was like, wait, hey, who, would, who would say not to pray? That doesn't make any sense. If you're praying to Jesus, can Satan answer prayers to Jesus? And I've even, I don't know this for a fact, but I've even heard that a couple of years ago, in the Salt Lake City Church, one of their apostles made the same statement, not to pray on anything, not to go to the Lord to ask about anything that doesn't come from their first presidency or their top 15 apostles. And again, it's like, why, why would we be okay with taking the Book of Mormon to Jesus, but then not another holy book? So this idea of telling us not to go to the Lord well, then who do we go to? Do we trust in the arm of man? Do we trust in the flesh? We don't need to pray in the Book of Mormon because some pastor says so. We don't need to pray on, uh, let's see, first thing that comes to my mind, uh, Mauricio Burgers. He translated the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. That's, that's what he claims. Did he or didn't he? Do we go to a man? and say, hey, he says not to pray on this, so I don't, or do we take it to the Lord? And I, I have a hard time with this idea of saying, I can't go to God for this because some man told me not to. Now, if there's a scripture in the Bible that says, don't go and do these things, like what I'm reading right now to you guys. Well, that's pretty blatant. But we also don't want to be like King Saul. He went to the witch of Endor, to seek necromancy, knowing full well that he had been putting necromancers to death. I'm going to skip ahead for a second here and say, I think that this is what it, these verses are really all about. When you have people saying, don't go to the Lord, don't pray to God. Well, then who do we pray to? Do we go somewhere else? 
And the answer is no. We don't go to the dead. We don't go to necromancers. We don't go to other gods because it says in verse 21, which I'm going to get to in a minute, I am Yavah which sanctify you. I am the God that you need. I am all that you need. Just come to me. I just want to say real quickly here that for me, the big picture message is we can lean on the Lord. We can take everything to the Lord. We can pray to the Lord and we can and should build that personal relationship with the Lord. If you don't take anything else out of this week's Thursday thought, please take that. For us, our God, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Yavah, whatever name you use, Elohim Shaddai, that's our source. That is who we go to every time. And we leave anybody or anything else alone. There are dark things in this world and we should avoid them like the plague. I have loved ones that have passed on and I miss them. But I know I'm going to see them again. Yeah, it is hard sometimes. And sometimes that comfort of knowing I'm going to see them again, I want to see them right now. But I think this scripture is very clear. We need to let the dead have their rest. We need to leave them alone. The Lord has given us tools and means to access him. And if the Lord decides to send someone, like for example, the Lord sending the angel Moroni to Joseph Smith, that, that will happen. But it's not something that we need to go outside of the Lord to try to do. And the second part of this about not cutting our incisions, you know, that's referring to tattoos. It's why a lot of Christians and Jews don't get tattoos. And and this the stuff I'm reading to you, I'm reading it to you from the plates of brass, but it says the same or similar things throughout the Torah in the Old Testament. So this isn't anything new or different. I just felt impressed by the Spirit to share these exact verses, probably because I'm the seed of Joseph and because I translated this book. I mean to be quite frank. But it's not new information is my point. This is stuff that we know. And I think it's important that we understand that if you see someone with a tattoo, it's not a sin. I understand that this is probably tied to ancient pagan worship of other deities. But I think that here in the Old Testament world, we focus a lot on the New Testament with this idea that it's all in your heart. The kingdom of God is inside us and these type of things. But I think the Lord's trying to teach us that here. It's, it's within us. And so because of that, let the dead sleep. Know that we will see them again in the resurrection. And yeah, it, it hurts and we miss our loved ones. Carry that here. I would like to encourage you not to go seeking more information on this topic. Because by doing so, we are not allowing the dead to rest. I would encourage you to avoid this like the plague. And I feel impressed by the Spirit to share with you what to do when you encounter people that run into trouble that did not heed this advice. I mentioned last time, the reason why I don't like talking about this is because the people who like to watch these kind of videos and read this kind of stuff generally have an idle curiosity that ends up creating a situation where they get themselves in trouble. When you get in a situation where you see someone who is struggling with this, there is power in Jesus, and if you are born again, you have that power. This does not necessarily require the you know, high priesthood keys. You can use them, but at the end of the day, I firmly believe that 
in Genesis when it talks about the woman being able to step on the head of the snake if the snake bites her heel. I think that's referring to what I'm going to teach you right now. And I'm going to, I say that as someone who has cast out demons as a teacher and a priest of the Aaronic priesthood, speaking in Latter-day Saint terms. And we have to understand that if, they, if the majority of the priests in ancient Israel didn't have the Melchizedek priesthood and yet were able to cast evil away, they had to have a way of doing it that did not require the high priesthood, the Melchizedek or the Magdalene priesthood. Today in our age, in, in the English language, the way you do it is you raise your arm to the square. And because I'm on screen, you can't see that how my the square is. I guess I'll scoot over and run it like that. You raise your arm to the square and you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command all evil to leave. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I, I use Jesus' name twice. Once to make sure they're paying attention and the second to cast out. Now, if it's a person, put my hand on their head or just touch them anywhere. And that physical contact helps. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave and not return. Leave this person, leave this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, the words you use don't have to be exactly what I said. Follow the promptings of the Spirit and say what you feel is required. Also, keep in mind that what may seem like some type of possession isn't always possession. It can also be a mental illness. And if it's a mental illness, they need to be healed or they need special help from a doctor or both. And so an exorcism just isn't going to work. I want to leave you with a Thursday thought on all this. And I know that I'm going to sound like a broken record as I said it, as I say it. Let the dead have their rest. Know and trust in the salvation of Jesus Christ. Understand that God is real. God is good. And death is nothing more than a temporary separation. We will see our loved ones again. We will be with our loved ones again. I will just quickly say, I don't believe in the idea of this tiered system of kingdoms, the way people generally explain Doctrine and Covenant 76. I, I use Doctrine and Covenant 76 because that's what it is in most Doctrine and Covenants. In Doctrine and Saints, it would be 42. Paul says that it's our bodies that are telestial and celestial, terrestrial. And so I don't think these kingdoms are places. I think that just like when you look around our world, there's all sorts of different people. In the next life, in the resurrection, we'll all be together. We won't be separated by a veil or by planets or by anything else. I think we'll all be one. And I think that we'll all be in the bodies that we will be the most happy to be in because we'll be in the bodies that we eternally ever were and are. So let the dead have their rest. We miss our loved ones that have passed and moved on. Know that we will see them again in the resurrection. Satan is the one who takes away hope. Jesus is the hope. He's not merely a restorer of hope. He doesn't merely give us hope. He is hope. So brothers and sisters, my Thursday thought for you this week is, let's take that hope of Jesus Christ in our hearts and let's spread that hope throughout the world. And let's let the dead have the rest. That's my message and I share it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.